Alright, howdy howdy. Uh, this, I'm Shentak and I have with me Karaoke on commentary. This is Magic Knight Rares for the Saturn. Um, if we're ready on timer, we can just get right into it. And, uh, alright. I'm gonna go ahead and do a reset of the console. Because we need to manipulate a little RNG before we start. So basically, we need to go through the boot screen as fast as we can uh, because we want to get a specific RNG seed. Okay, three, two, one, go. Hmm. All right, so we start out this run. We're in Tokyo Tower. Uh, the three girls are on a field trip. I believe they're all in different schools. And instead of... Uh, being summoned to Sephiro by Princess Emerald, we're just gonna go out of bounds and get there ourselves, uh, cause we're too impatient to wait on the princess. Okay. And, okay, I didn't get the pattern. I'm just gonna take a little bit. Come on, NPC. So we're hoping, we're, we need this NPC to push us out of bounds. We're in this corner, and if you don't do it just right with our manipulation, uh, she wanders around for a bit. And sometimes it can take a couple of minutes. See, sometimes she'll just get stuck in the corner like that, and there's nothing we can really do to push her around. <laughs> so I'm just going to stand here holding left and wait for her to push us out of bounds. Yes, Sephiro was just out of bounds this entire time. We didn't need the, the princess to push us there, or to teleport us there. Come on. Uh, but basically you're playing as the three girls, Hikaru, Umi, and Fu. They're like... 13 or 14 years old. I'm not sure what their age is. I haven't 14, watched the anime. Yeah. Okay, 14. Hikaru says in her introduction in this game that she's 14. Yeah, but I haven't seen the intro in years. <laughs> uh, you just need to do a JP run sometime. Uh, it's in Japanese. Well, I mean, in Japanese, you can skip this. Yeah, if only we could talk to her and make her walk towards us, but sadly, that doesn't influence her movement at all. Like, you can kind of, like, Stop her from moving a direction, but it doesn't influence her. There we go. So now we're out of bounds. Uh, oops. Wrong menu. So I'm gonna change up the mesh of speeds, change the uh, the button layout. And now we just hold up right here, and there's some uh, fall tiles on the outside of this screen. Uh, just because there's nothing out here that you just kind of fall, and when you fall into a pit, you take damage. And even though we're technically only supposed to be able to uh, access Hikaru in this room, it still cycles through all three girls. And because the game doesn't know what to do with us, it puts us in Polyzoo Village, um, which is the, I guess, the uh, the first area on the index list in the game for where, where it sets you if you've never been anywhere else. Like... If you go into an area, if you load, if you, like you can do, this, there's other areas you can do this in. If you load a fresh save file, if you load a save file into an area that you can do this in, um, it'll still take you to Polyzoo Village. If you zone into the area instead, it'll load you into that area because then it has given you a point to load into. All right. So we're doing the all Rainbow Amulets category, which is about as close to a 100% counter as you can get. Uh, come on, there we go. There's uh, rainbow amulets hidden in chests and also in random uh, areas in the game, like just clicking on that flower gives us one. Uh, there's also another one next to the mayor's house. Um, the, the story is um, that uh, Princess Emerald has been captured by the evil Zagat, and we've been, we've been summoned as the prophesied magic knights to take down Zagat and save Sephiro. And, uh, so basically this world has known no strife with Princess Emerald as rule because, uh, her power of thought is so strong. Um, and that's basically how magic is in this game is it's, it's based, based on the strength of your thought and the purity of it. And the Emerald, Princess Emerald was so pure and strong that she was able to keep the entire world safe. Um, we're jumping through doors. Uh, normally that's not tech. But if you if you have running speed, it'll say it'll it'll save your running speed when you jump into it when you go into a new room instead of resetting it. So over the course of run until we get instant dash, it saves time. And even when you have instant dash, it saves time. So you don't have to prep it. So, you're had wasting the wrong your button magic already. <laughs> right. 
And so in this town, uh, they're beset by monsters in this cave. And uh, this guy stopping us, his name is Lucino. He's the sorcerer of the village. And he had put up, a, he had erected a barrier to keep the monsters out, but the barrier had uh, broken. And he wants to be the hero of the town. And he's uh, doing everything he can to stop us from taking that away from him. <laughs> But this game is basically a Zelda-like in that you have an overworld, you have a lot of uh, uh, movement types that's similar to Zelda, you have an upgrade path of uh, magic and you get more health when you defeat bosses, but you don't get new equipment. That's like the big difference. And this is basically a tutorial dungeon, there's another tutorial dungeon we skipped. Um, so basically, when we did that Out of Bounds in Tokyo Tower, it skipped about 35 minutes of the intro that we used to have to do in the run. Uh, basically, uh, we get summoned by Princess Emerald, we immediately get attacked by uh, one of Zagat's uh, henchmen named Alcyon. Uh, we meet up with uh, a woman named Precia who tells us that we need to get some Escudo to uh, make living weapons, I guess. I guess that'd be the best way to describe them. But we have to go through yeah. a Forest of Confusion uh, type of uh, dungeon. Spoilers, we'll be seeing that later. Yes, uh, normally in the NAP percent run you wouldn't see that dungeon at all, but because there are Rainbow Amulets there, we will be going there much, much later. But we're doing as much as we can out of sequence to uh, just go through the route as quickly as possible. Yeah, even though we're going to be going to back to that tutorial dungeon pretty much at the end of the game, um, we still do what we call the, the Tokyo Tower skip to skip everything around that because all the cutscenes there of, you know, coming into Sephiro and talking to Precia and all that, they're all voice acted. And voice acted text boxes cannot be skipped through. Um, you yeah. can skip the actual animated cutscenes by pressing start or C in this version. Um, but voice acted text boxes cannot be skipped at all so we don't want to after this after the intro part of the game they're only in the um evil people cutscenes when they cut to the evil people and seeing what they're doing they're never like in the really the main game anymore so uh, save time there and also that is why the japanese run is slower than the u.s version the uh, japanese version is pretty much fully voiced yeah it is super um, slow <laughs> So therefore, it's super slow. It adds, and also you can't skip animated cutscenes. So it's a rare case of a JRPG where the Japanese version is actually slower by, was it like an hour to an hour and a half or something? Uh, I think it's about forty-five uh, minutes. Forty-five but... minutes now? Okay. Or no, 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 it was ninety minutes. That's right. Oh yeah, was an hour to an hour and a half. So yeah, sixty to ninety minutes slower than the uh, English version. Yeah, it is super duper slow. But it's also easier. Working designs, uh, if you're familiar with them, they're famous for making games harder when they localize them. But this is one of the few times where it was better that they did make it harder, because the Japanese version is uh, comically easy. <laughs> yeah. There's a point... Um, I forget if you do it in this run, but I think you do. We, do the death, we take a death warp later. It's actually faster in the Japanese version to walk back to the entrance of the area and leave normally than is to do a death warp because it yeah. takes so long to die <laughs> yeah so we got our first boss here it's like a crab spider thing uh this is going to introduce you to the magic swap glitch if you want to explain that sure so um what shentok's doing here is um i believe he has the umi set up for magic so magic is on the c button and switch characters is on the i'm holding my saturn controller up the z button uh -huh. or, or y button so um Basically, if you switch characters and cast magic on the same frame, using a character who has magic to a character who does not have magic, you will switch characters but cast magic with the character you switch to. If you're one frame off, you will cast magic with the first character, but not cast any spells. 
Um, so Shintok is perfect. <laughs> Except for, like, maybe a missed shot, but did every magic swap glitch perfectly by switching um, from Hikaru, who had a magic bar, to... It was Hikaru to Umi, right? Yes. Yes, okay, from Hikaru, who had a full magic bar, to Umi, who had no magic left. Um, so it was sort of casting from Hikaru's magic, but not expending it, but doing Umi's spell. Yeah. It basically did a mana check on Hikaru, but it uses... It doesn't even use Umi's mana, but it uses Umi's magic. I'm not sure how that how that works, honestly. You'd think it yeah. would drain Umi's mana. But maybe it's you... set up in a way where it can't go below zero, so it just ignores it. Like, so you can't underflow your magic. <laughs> yeah, but it's also, like... It only use it doesn't also use Hikaru's magic because you're switching to Umi. Now, if you're a frame off and you hear the way to know that you did it wrong is if you switch characters but hear the voice clip of the character you switched from. So if you switch to Umi and you hear Hono no Ya, which is Hikaru's a fire arrow spell, then you know you messed up because now Hikaru cast her magic but nothing happened because you switched characters. And that means you were off by a little bit. Yeah. So there, that little kid that we saw, that's another of Zagat's uh, henchmen. His name is Ascot. He's actually pretty young for an evil villain. I think he's like maybe like 10 or 12 or something like that. I don't think they ever specify his age, but I know he's like really young. And his specialty is um, controlling and manipulating monsters. And that giant crab we thought was one of his. I think it's like Arachnadia, he calls it. Yes, that's Arachnadia. I had to think a second. Yeah. <laughs> like Arachnid, that's the second. No, it's the first. Arachnid is the first one. His yeah. thing is, um, he's like a monster trainer. He keeps monsters as pet, and sends them after, and then gets mad when you defeat his pets, because, you know, he's like, I like my pets. It's like, no, you're sending them to to be defeated and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, moving on in the plot, we're heading off to this village where, um. During the intro cutscenes that we skipped, we're told that we're looking for these three machines, and they're in um, ocean, uh, sea. What is it? Volcano sea, volcano sea and sky. Yeah. So that's here's correct. the sea, and we're thinking that maybe a machine is out here in the uh, ocean. But uh, there's whirlpools all over the ocean because, you know, Sephora was crumbling because Princess Emerald isn't praying hard enough. So we yeah. can't. So no boats are going out. So we need to find someone to teach us to swim because apparently even though boats can't go out in the whirlpools you can swim through them yeah and we have to learn from the best who has exiled himself over uh losing the little girl's pet whose name is uh sarah uh lost her cat and who drowned in the water if i recall trying to save uh trying to save the cat and now he's like uh, inconsolable with himself and we go to ask him to learn how to swim, and he's just like, nah, I'm not teaching anyone how to swim. I'm never going to swim again. And we have to let him know that Sarah's doing fine now. He even has a new pet, a cute little pink dragon named Jiminy. And I realized I forgot a rainbow amulet, so I have to go back and grab that. Oh, no. R yeah, write that one... down. Is, <laughs> a, is, there, is, is, is there one in uh, the first dungeon? No, no, no. It's in Taflon. It's next to oh, Sarah's house. Oh, yeah, the but... one by... The one by the house, yeah. Yeah, and now I have to wait till after uh, the, the tutorial cutscene and go back and get it instead of getting it on the way. Because we're going to be entering a, um, a, a, a I guess, sizable cutscene as uh, right before Sarah's house, uh, where, where we get to learn how to swim. Like beavers, apparently. <laughs> Beavers are a common thing in JRPGs. Right? I mean, guy speak beaver, and Stewie Coden 5 recruit beaver, beaver. Wait, who speaks beaver? Guy speak beaver in Final Fantasy 2. Oh. <laughs> I didn't I did not know that. Yeah, there's a there's a in, in the in the, uh, at least the GBA version of uh, Final Fantasy 2, there's like these, uh, there's that line, Guy Speak Beaver, because uh, <laughs> of like, little beaver creatures, and it's just, it's one of the many memes of Final Fantasy. Oh my god, that's amazing. So, you know, like any reasonable swimming instructor, he just tosses us in and then tears off his shirt and does a fancy dive. And uh, we're, we're learning the Roaring Rapid Wave Cut. Try saying that ten times fast. 
<laughs> no, I think I'll go. I forget what, what was it called in the uh, in the beta version. It was something funny. And I yeah, I well, I, I don't I don't know it offhand, but uh, Foo she doesn't get the hang of swimming, so they just throw her a um and uh, a Mr. life preserver. Hikaru and the others have mastered the skill known as Roaring Rapid Wave Cut. Yes, in other words... The and she's like, yes, this is more my speed. Difference. I don't really like swimming the normal way. <laughs> now they can journey to the ice cave on the island to the and north. And if, you, if you're paying attention, by they said this was the second lecture. We did the skip water. the first one, the which just teaches you how to save the game. Because okay, speedrun, why would we save we the game, right? The game. See you later, kids. Oh, I found it. Uh, water ultra destroy kill. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, earlier this year there was, uh, some prototype- localization prototypes released for Ray Earth, and, uh, their- their temporary words are very much literal translations, and some of them are really awkward and hilarious. So, yeah, that was the rainbow amulet I missed. Normally I would get it on the way to Sarah, but I totally missed it. So to swim in this game, we just mash the attack button. Uh, there's a rhythm to it, so you don't have to mash it quickly. But normally there's this long path you're supposed to take around the whirlpools because they kind of drag and pull you all over the place to get to the next dungeon. But uh, we can just mostly hold up and be fine. Like we hold up here, uh, hold up here, then go right up here. And then it pushes right up to the uh, entrance of the dungeon, which is where we want to be. And then this is the first dungeon where character-specific magic becomes uh, required to, co to complete it. So uh, for this dungeon specifically, we need Hikaru's magic. And if she dies before we get that, then uh, we're no longer able to complete the dungeon until we exit. Okay, that's going to mess with me a little bit. I, I, I use a Turbo's uh, controller for mashing through text, and sometimes I forget to turn it off. <laughs> That's why I use A for my turbo for text instead of C. Well, I use C for longer cutscenes, and usually I remember to turn it off. <laughs> but this time I did not. But it's okay, we can always magic swap glitch to compensate for the lack of mana. Oh yeah, this is a gorgeous game. It was uh, fairly early in the Saturn's life in Japan, and it was actually the very last release in the US, because uh, the source code was partially lost and working designs had to spend a considerable amount of time uh, rebuilding it. Which, you know, it's pretty typical for the 90s to lose your source code to hard drive crashes. Ooh, that and guy then almost on, got me. On top of that, uh, the CEO of Sega of America at the time did not like 2D Japanese games. So there was a bit of stalling with, with uh, regards to that for releasing the game. Um, yep. Just because they thought, you know, it won't sell. It, people don't want this stuff. And, you know, that's why we got, that's why we didn't get a lot of classic Saturn games released in English. Like, uh, work, I know Working Designs had interest in the Sakura Tyson series as well. Uh, we didn't get those. And uh, lots of other stuff, too. Yeah, it's and a then shame there's, because, like, there's games a like couple this of them beautiful. where they were going to localize them, and then, like, the publisher said no because they were going to do it, and then they ended up not doing it. Alright, so we just learned uh, Hikaru's level 2 magic, which is uh, light, lightning shock or flame shock or something like that. Yeah, Flaming Shock. Yeah, that's it. Oh crap, or he's I think doing, it's even he's doing like, a dash. I think it's called Red Thunder. I think she's saying, like, Akai Thunder. So yeah. it's like Red Thunder in Japanese, Flaming Shock in this localized version. No clue what they call it in the anime. Um, I have not seen the dubbed anime in years, so... And here we need to clear all the enemies out. They're real weak enemies, but, you know, using magic's the best way to go. Ah! No, they keep pushing oh, he's me in the bullying. water. He's bullying you. I've never seen them bully me so hard. Okay, we still got them all. don't do damage. Yeah. There we go. So I'll get another block pushing puzzle. These are like ice blocks, so they slide instead of uh, you can instead of being able to push one tile. Nice. Okay, switch to Hikaru, and heal up, and now we're gonna get um, another cutscene, but most of the US cutscenes are not voice acted at all, so they, they're pretty speedy. Uh, work Design selectively chose to uh, voice act the beginning, and cutscenes with uh, 
Zagat and his minions. And then the uh, animated cutscenes. And they chose to focus their voice acting in the diary that the, each girl writes throughout the game to tell you about the plot and what their thoughts on it are. But that's like unique. That, that part's actually unique to the US version being dubbed. In the Japanese version, they chose to dub everything else. And I'm kind of thankful for that from a speedrun perspective because then it makes cutscenes a lot more, a lot faster. And oh yeah, here's Makona. Um, so we're supposed, we get her at the beginning of the game, but we skip that, and instead Makona's here. <laughs> and Makona kind of acts as our link to, um... I am totally blanking on his name. Oh, Clef, yeah. Clef. Clef was... statue, or, you know, his yeah, he body. Got, he, got turned to he, got turned, he got petrified, and now we have to uh, also kill Zagat to save him. But uh, poor uh, Jiminy gets turned into a giant monster thanks to uh, Ascot. And I wonder if Jiminy was always a plant by Ascot or if Ascot just chose to uh, pick on Jiminy. I feel kind of like he was a plant because... Everyone said that everyone in town started shunning Sarah because they said Jiminy's a monster and he's kind of creepy looking. Yeah. So I think he might have been a plant, but it's been a while since, like, I think this part's in the anime because of the cutscene that follows this boss. Um, it it's is. It's been probably 20 years since I've seen the anime, so. Yeah, um, I'm fairly this certain is a, this it's in game the anime. Is a, this game is a very rough approximation of the first season of the anime, which is also the first half of the manga. So, so it's, um, there's basically a point in the game where it kind of derails to, you know, be a game and have content before kind of realigning itself with the uh, plot of the anime, so. Yeah. Okay, kind of a warning, if you're, if you're photosensitive for, you know, a couple, next couple of bosses, you might want to be careful oh, just, with this, because we're going to be using Red Thunder. It's just this um, boss. Yeah, okay, just this one. Um, yeah. Using it because it's the strongest level magic at this point. It does more damage than the level one magics. Um, oh no, he got an extra attack off as he was dead. <laughs> and Plus fact, this is the die. only boss that you can continuously do damage to after it dies, because it takes a while for it to actually do the death animation. Yeah, <laughs> and if I've you're actually not paying done that attention. Before. If you're not paying attention to this, it might be hard to see when he turns red. That means there's one red thunder left, or one flaming shock, shock left to defeat him. And because he's pink, it might be hard to see when he turns red. Yeah. Um. So when he turns red, you have one attack left, but you can keep attacking after, and you can... I've lost time there because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I've done that too. I, there's a one, I think there was one time where I did, like, seven extra casts, because I was just totally not paying attention. I was like... <laughs> You're Shouldn't just, Jiminy be dead by now? You were just, uh, what do you call it? Autopiloting it. Yeah. So, Sarah's pretty sad that Jiminy's dead, and, uh, she, she hit Umi, if I recall, in the cutscene. Yeah, and, I think she, I think she slaps Umi. Yeah, and Kaltus is like, go, don't be like me. And, uh, we did this fight basically to prove our strength to, uh, Sarah's, um, Umi's, uh, giant robot <laughs> which also takes the form of a dragon and also lives inside the uh the pendant in her armor so you know these, these dragons they're very um portable or these, these giant machines are very portable <laughs> and now we get a cutscene with the villains and uh the world-renowned working designs voice acting which i i love a lot my, my. I won't say they're amazing Pity actors or anything, but I think they failure. do a very good job fitting the roles. And uh, we also get introduced to uh, Kaldina here, Kaldina. who is Ascot's uh, older sister, and she specializes in, in dance magic. <laughs> yeah, dance magic and illusions, basically. Yeah. And, kind, of, kind of mind control, I guess, too, so, you know, manipulation, essentially. Yeah, charms and the like. So now that uh, we've taken care of, now that we've uh, unsealed the dragon, the waters have calmed because the dragon was what was causing the the waters to be uh, 
in term I don't know tumultuous. I think that's the word I want. Yeah, sure, that works. So now we get to go to the next town, which uh, we're only going we're going there because there's a volcano that erupted, and we were told to seek out the volcano, as well as uh, the sea and the sky. There we go, almost perfect. And I'm trying to be very careful there, because I've actually jumped on the platform before and getting stuck in between the NPC and the barrier, and for whatever reason, the game locks up if you do that. You can't pause, you can't do anything. Oh. You can't even soft <laughs> reset. And, uh, I have not seen that happen. I've only seen it happen once, and I've done everything I can to avoid ever hit have it happening again. <laughs> oh, wait, so, you're talking uh, about the soft lock at the, uh, in the... At the at the, the, at the dock up? there. No, 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 oh, at the, the dock. dock. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know there was one at the dock. I was thinking, uh, I, I, I zoned out for a second and heard soft lock. I'm like, oh, it's the Rafarga soft lock. That's hopefully <laughs> won't happen during this run. I've only had that happen once, and it was on the same day you got yours. <laughs> so here we have Ferio wooing the women with his flute. Um, he's, he's, he's doing it to, to prevent Caldina from bringing more under her control, but... Uh, Fu has a thing for Ferio and is kind of jealous about it, just not and not listening to him. And there's a couple of rainbow ambulances here that are kind of out of the way. They're in a secret. They're one of them is in a secret path that we have to take down here and underneath this bridge. There's this path here that you have to you just have to kind of know it's there. And it's the only one in the game that's like that. Okay, there we go. I just got to do it blind. There we go. And then we have to talk to this woman, and she's like, oh, wow, you found this place, and in the fireplace there's something special for you. And it's a rainbow amulet, but we can't actually collect that rainbow amulet until we talk to her, because otherwise we just get flavor text that it's a fireplace. And then there's one here. Man, that is honestly probably the, 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 the most hidden rainbow amulet out of all of them, I'd say. Yeah. Although there's the one in later that's, like, behind a building where you have to talk to a kid you can't even see. All well, right, that's so, the second most one, then. Yeah. So now we're going to have to go to a plot inn and stay the night, because that's how plot progresses in most towns in this game, is by staying at the inn. And something weird is going on. We see all the people walking around like zombies going into the cave. And what's going on is Caldina is actually using these people to dig in the cave to try to find the ancient machine before we can. Yeah, because the reason why um, she's up here is because there there is a mountain nearby that I think is a volcano. Yeah, it erupted um, and, and caused a uh, Rosen to be covered in snow. Yeah, because climate change or something. And um, so, you know, she knows that there's a machine hidden in the volcano... But, you know, little does she know, this isn't the right volcano. There's two volcanoes. Yeah. But the other one ha is not active yet. So, I guess they don't know it's a volcano since it doesn't erupt. I'm not sure. Like, on the map it shows it as a volcano, but... Like, the map doesn't change ever. Yeah. There we go. And here we have Ferio again. And we're just going to tell him off because uh, Fu is still upset at him. Even though he's, like, offering help, he never helps anyways. My work here is done. But you didn't he... do anything! 100% that. <laughs> and there's five rainbow amulets in this dungeon. This is the first uh, dungeon in the run where there's rainbow amulets. It's not the first dungeon in the game, but the first dungeon in the run. And this one is quite a few of them. I, th I think it's the... No, no, there's one dungeon that has more, but this is like a, this is a unique dungeon. Ow. In that the entire dungeon's one giant room. Whereas most dungeons are separated into multiple rooms. Yeah, it's mm. called... It, it gets a cave. very... Yeah, bewildering cave. It gets really... You can get lost here really easily. Yeah, because you um, have this junction here where there's a lot of different directions you can go. I wish I could get run speed while doing a diagonal run, but for whatever reason I just can't. There we go. So to get to get running speed, you just have to run in the same direction for a while. 
Uh, there's like a way to do it if you tap your button presses in a specific way that you can get running speed early, but it's really difficult to do and not something you can do consistently. Whoops. Hi, Rafarga. There we go. Hi, Rafarga. We'll be seeing him later. Uh, yeah, your runs are kind of, it's, it's like sort of based on your walking cycle, but also maybe a frame count. I don't remember the exact breakdown for it, but if you, you know, tap a certain amount to and watch your arms swinging, you can go into run speed early. It's a, it's a learned kind of trick to do. I can't, yeah. I can sort of do it, but I also forget to do it and therefore don't do it regularly. Yeah, I've only done it a couple of times successfully. Uh, most of the time, it's just, I'd rather try to get run speed normally. Okay, that's three. Oops. Lost my run speed there. Although it doesn't matter, we'll be going to go into the water soon. Where you can't run anyways, you just swim. Okay, and then there's one more hidden one, and then another rainbow amulet that's basically on the way to the boss. Can't have them all be super hidden. So here, there's a cave There's a cave here that you can't really see that it's there. Uh, there's an enemy that... Ow, I was hoping to wait for that. Because I'm going to get hit on the way back. Yep, that's fine. As long as Umi's not dead, I'm good. Uh, if Umi dies, then I can't finish this dungeon. Because I need her alive. But, like, I could exit the dungeon and heal, but I'd rather not, because load times are very long in this game since it's an early CD title. Okay, there we go. So there is a glitch at that mirror, which is, um... I guess a movement storage kind of glitch, where if you... The sort of certain part before Clef starts talking, you have a minute, like a slightly little bit of control where you can jump past the mirror if you kind of store momentum, and therefore Clef talks to you when you're behind the mirror, and then you're out of bounds. Yeah. And you can walk around, instead of having to go down and around this way, um, you can just walk around and get to the boss door that way, which is used in the any percent run uh, in the world record. Um, I've never been able to pull it off, therefore I've never done it. <laughs> yeah, I've never been able to pull it off either. Uh, it was explained to me, but I didn't understand it when I tried it, because... It's it's very particular. All right, so I grabbed an MP upgrade there to refill on mana. I don't technically have to, but it makes a boss later in the game a bit smoother. Okay, there we go. Heal up. All right, this boss you're supposed to use Fu for because she has a ranged attack. She's the only one with a ranged attack, but uh, thanks to the magic swap glitch, uh, we can just keep casting magic on the boss. Because we're never in range to actually do physical damage to the boss otherwise. Yeah, the other issue with using Fu at this point is she is the only character who has not had a level up yet. Um, due to the... In a normal playthrough, at this point, all the characters would have would be level 1. And Umi and Hikaru would be level 2. Um, yep. And at level 1, you get your... Um, charged attack. And Fu's charged attack is a homing, like a bunch of arrows, and they home in on, on the enemies. Um, and therefore you don't need to actually aim. But at this point, Fu is level 0 still, and Hikaru and Umi are level 1. So Fu does not have her charged attack. And therefore to hit, not only is she a little bit weaker because she isn't leveled up, but you also have to aim to hit Kaldina, and it takes a lot of physical hits. So if, if you magic glitch and fail the magic glitch and run out of magic and um just not do good it's actually faster to die and try again than to try to physically kill caldina it just yeah. takes so long yeah Fu does does so little damage she's not meant to be your damage dealer she's meant to be your support like she has a heal she starts out with a healing spell she does have a damage spell but it's not particularly useful and then she also has um a spell called protective wind which we'll be seeing much much later in the run that lets you float over everything and makes you invulnerable, but you also can't interact with objects while it's active. And uh, Zagat being the benevolent evil villain he is, if, if people fail, he just uh, tries to get rid of them. 
Like, uh, he turned hmm. Alcyone to Crystal, but Alcyone somehow managed to break out. And... But Alcyon's basically like the the, the failure of his team because she, uh, she keeps coming back and uh, failing to defeat us. Okay, switch to Karu. So now we need to go talk to the innkeeper again. Uh, basically, uh, we need to go through the cave of the volcano, but there's a rock blocking it. And she mentions Rafarga, who could help us. And he's a pretty cool dude. But sadly, we don't get to see him for very long. And he's going to teach us how to break down that rock. Because he's a big, strong guy. And he can teach three little girls how to, how to, how to bash up fragile walls. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, I don't have a door, but because snow just drifts up and blocks and blocks it and turns into ice, so I just kind of bash through it whenever I need to leave or get inside. It's no problem. And this cutscene is great in Japanese because he's like saying "ora ora 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 muda 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 muda" that kind of thing. <laughs> There are plenty of good emulators for Saturn games these days. Um, Mednafen is good if you have a, 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 fair, a capable modern computer. Uh, SSF is good if you have like a lower end computer. Uh, there's also some other ones that I don't really recommend because they haven't been updated in a while like Yaba Use. So Hikaru can't sleep, and so we're gonna have a heart to heart with um, Rafarga. Find out a little bit about his history and who he was, who he used to be. He actually used to be a uh, he used to be a, the, one of the palace guards for uh, Princess Emerald. But when Zagat came to kidnap Emerald, he was completely helpless due to Zagat's powerful and overwhelming magic. Oh, Jojo's... Isn't Jojo, like, from the 80s? Uh, so, we hear a scream. Uh, we hear from we hear um, Umi scream. Find out it's just because there's a bug in her bed. And we gain the strength to break uh, through the it. wall. Mysterious and we get three. another tutorial on what we just learned. The skill known as the pulverizing bash. Indeed. By running to increase your speed, the power to throw yourselves increases as well. You can destroy places with weak foundations or small cracks with incredible ease. But be sure to give yourself plenty of room to run so you can increase your speed. That's right. Make a good approach, start running, and then boom! That's I love how the voice actor just like well, does like a, a clapper, yeah, like uh, pushes, punches his fist into his hand to make that boom. clap, that 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 snap sound when he goes boom. I love it. Yeah, it's like yeah, just keep it in. Okay, and good, he didn't freeze there. So we've both encountered a uh, soft lock at that point when I think it's yeah, it's when the uh, Sephiro lecture is supposed to pop up. The game just kind of hangs. Um, I don't know if, we're, if if it's from going too fast and it can't load the voice file. Well, it's or... only happened once. It's only it's happened to you once. It's happened to me once. That's why I thought I was like, oh, it's my it's, my disc is dying, and then it happened to you. I'm like, oh, it's just it's just uh, the game being stupid at that point. So sometimes Possibly. the game doesn't load fast enough. And when it happened to Shentok, it did load through the scene eventually, and yeah, then it froze. Did. Yeah. <laughs> Also, the beta name for the pulverizing bash is, let me find it, is a multi-pulverizing shot. <laughs> so now we're going through another dungeon. This is more like a, a tunnel to the next area. There's no boss or anything. Uh, there's no end of the dungeon. Uh, there's a lot of rainbow amulets here, and we do have to come back here a second time, because there's some that we can't get until we learn an ability later. Oh, I missed that jump. Uh, there's two of them I can get now, but I'm just going to get them later just uh, for convenience. And I'm just going to walk through here, take damage, switch characters. 
There we go. So I gotta be really careful going through this room. Uh, there's these lava monster enemies, and they hurt a lot if I run into them. Like, they do four points of damage in the US version, which is a lot of your health early on. This game is just not kind. Yeah, especially right. when we're down, when we're uh, under-leveled by one level at this point. I think, no? Are we even? No, we are under-leveled. Under -leveled, oh yeah, we're still. very yeah. much under-leveled. Uh, yeah, like... and we haven't picked up any um, health, uh, health up jewels, which, uh, those little red hearts you might see around the map, those are like the uh, heart jewels, and those will raise a character, just one character, you pick a character, HP by one. Uh, the blue ones raise a character's MP by one. And uh, at the start of this run, I think Shentop said, like, all rainbow amulets is, like, pretty close to 100% run. Um, the next level up from that is what I've been stealing from SMRPG and calling most of the stuff. Um, is if you collected every on or every like world map, overworld, dungeon, whatever, the ones you can pick up, um, HP and MP up jewels. Because you can buy them, but they're unlimited when you buy them. So And it, getting money in this game is very painful. Yeah, as you can see, we have one money right now. That's because yeah, you picked are... one up from an enemy drop. Yeah, there are chests that give you 50, but uh, enemies, if if they drop money at all, it's usually only in uh, quantities of one or five or one or ten. And, and uh, those health up, health and mana upgrades are 300 apiece, if I recall. Something they're three, they're either 300 or like 500. Not 500. They're a lot. Yeah. I only ever bought one of each, like in the game when I played casually, and it took me. A little bit of grinding to get those. and uh, But yeah, like uh, most of the stuff run would be all the rainbow amulets, all of the HP and MP up jewels that you can find. Um, turning, like doing the thing with the rainbow amulets that we'll be showing when we get to the end of the run here. And uh, there was something else I was going to say. I guess having a having an HP and MP recover jewel, recover potion in your inventory to say that, hey, I have them. That's about it. <laughs> Yeah. Because so those, uh, those are, you can buy those, but you can find them in dungeons and stuff, but you can only hold one at a time. So there's enough in the game where you can just have one of each in your inventory at the end of the game. And that's, yeah. that would be most of the stuff. Yeah. So now a fire is broke out here, but it's not a normal fire. Uh, apparently the people recognize that it's not normal, it seems to be magical in source. Yeah. And now there's all these uh, fire rats that are going around trying to blow up on us. And for some, and there's a kid that's stuck in here for some reason, and we have to collect three keys because even though the place is burning down, the doors are still locked, and keys are readily available and uh, looking pretty pristine. Ow. And of course, so, they're um, the the three the three uh, important colors: red, blue, and green. Yeah, they just match the girls. Imagine if you had to like have the correct colored girl in in that they would use the correct colored key. Oh, God. <laughs> and if you died, if someone died, then that would uh, have you have to start over and keep everybody alive. Imagine if that happened. That'd be awful. <laughs> um, these no these, these fire rats, dog things are um, not only do they do more damage in this version, but they also move a lot faster. Yeah, ev like a lot of enemies have more speed in the U.S. release, which is both good and bad. Uh, it's kind of annoying when you're getting chased down, but there's a couple. There's a there's a dungeon later where you need to move enemy. You have to guide enemies to switch his and It's really annoying to do in the Japanese version because you kind of lose your uh, flow when doing it. But in the U.S. version, it just like it's timed so perfectly. Okay. All right. Nice. That wasn't too bad. And just for good measure, even though you needed a green key to open the one door, you still have to have you have to open the ball again. Oh, right, I forgot I had to move up here. <laughs> so here's the kid. Turns out it was uh, a ruse by Alcyone, who's just trying to get us. And she summons three, like, fire skull elementals. And this is the first fight where you can just spam your magic and the iframes will still tick down. Normally on fights, uh, you have to wait for the iframes to tick down before you can cast your spell again. 
because otherwise it'll just hold the iframe counter. Um, usually monster type bosses are the ones where that's that occurs, and human humanoid type bosses are the ones where you have to wait on the iframes. And very easy fight. Uh, this is also the only fight where uh, your magic type matters for the boss, because otherwise uh, their magic is non-elemental despite its appearance. Um, like, uh, Hikaru's magic does no damage, uh, Umi's magic does extra damage, and it just it just so happens to help that Umi's our, our best uh, magic caster right now, because Hikaru's level 2 magic is, is fairly laggy, whereas Umi's does not cause as much lag, so it's just faster to use it. And it just works out perfectly like that. So now we get another cutscene where they talk about Alcyon's failure and um, introduced uh, to. I think it is the, yeah, this is a cutscene where we Since get Zagat's new, new pet. Has been denied success once more. She not only departed without your permission, but lost to those three in your name. It is nothing short of a complete disgrace, my lord. I take but full there's a lot of rare games. Uh, there's two on the Game Gear. There's the Super Famicom Christ. one. There's the one on the Saturn. Charming. There's but probably more. I'm not. Now, you know. Oh yeah, there's one on the. There's Just at least one on the Game Boy Color. Activities. Probably more than that. As you wish. My Lord. There might be. I think there's. There might be two on the Game Boy Color as well. But there are a lot of rare games. This is just the only one that was officially localized. Yeah, a lot of people. At least when I started running this game back, uh, how many years has it been? Um, at least 2014, I think. Oh man, like, so yeah, about, you know, six, seven, whatever years ago, I don't remember when I started running this game. Um, most people at the time only knew of the, um, Super Famicom version because that one had a, um, fan translation done and that was the most, you know, common because Super Nintendo, Super Famicom... Super emulation is very easy compared to Saturn and this game has always been on the expensive side pretty much I remember 2000 I think I found out about this game in 2003 2004 uh, when I was when I learned about Ray Earth the series and the game was already a hundred you know a hundred to two hundred dollars fluctuating back then so it's always been on the higher end. <laughs> now it's like ten times that. Yeah, um, it's like a thousand dollars. It's crazy. I paid like a hundred and seventy for my copy, which is pretty high still. I, think. I paid ninety nine dollars for my copy. Nice. Uh, so now we're in the town called Lyrie, which is next to a giant tree called the Tree of Life, which is dying because of Emerald's uh, not being here, uh, since she's currently kidnapped and not able to. Uh, pray for Sephiro with her magic. Okay, and, so uh, the VA sounds familiar. If uh, if you've played Lunar, um, basically Lunar, I'd say would be the most common one that you might have heard these other voice actors in, because Working Designs did all of their voice acting in-house. So they have basically all their voice actors between the Working Designs games are all pretty much the same. I forget... Who's they got also did? I'd have to look it up. Yeah, he's done a, he's it's so done weird a watching this cutscene. I have not seen this cutscene in a while. In a while. The that I've seen you like other than you practicing for this. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, this whole section gets skipped in the any percent run. Yeah. Because we don't have to do this dungeon at all. We can just completely skip it. But I do need to get Rainbow Ambulance here. Uh, whoops, this one. So now it's kind of an annoying part where we have to go through this section uh, twice. <laughs> Once to find out that we can't enter the dungeon, and again to uh, actually do the dungeon. <laughs> Whoops. Uh... Panzer Dragoon Saga right now is hovering around $1,400 for a U.S. copy. But you can speedrun the Japanese version of that. Um, if you really want to spend silly money, you can... Uh, there's, there's other more expensive games, but 
I wouldn't recommend spending uh, any kind, any anywhere near that amount for any game, unless you're just like have a lot of money to spend and are a collector. So here we see the Tree of Life. It's definitely dying, or it's definitely dead. But there's still a leaf up there. But we're not gonna get it. Trust me. You think we're gonna get it, but we're not gonna get it. Okay, kill that. There we go. So we have to we have to go back the way we came, but because of that cutscene, it resets this barrier, and we have to get running speed again. It's kind of obnoxious since there's an enemy that spawns in the only spot where you can get running speed, and I tend to kill it because it's a pain to try to work around it. There we go. Because, yeah, we still we still can't just run on command. We have to build up speed. But we're about to get uh, the ability to run on command with the X button uh, in two of the button layouts. And I found out today that the third button layout changes it to the Z button. Oh. I never used that one. Yeah. Because it's not speedrun friendly. <laughs> oh, boy. I can't wait to read out this name for this skill once we learn it. For the, from the uh, beta translation. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, but if you look hard enough, there's a lot of expensive games that just aren't worth the price. So Abner here, who is like taunting us earlier, is like, you know what? I'm just gonna do, I'm instead of teaching you guys how to run, I'm just gonna do this myself because you won't go on a date with me. And this nice kid here, he's like, yeah, I'll teach you how to run. Abner's not such a bad guy, he's just being a dork. So this kid with the running with the with the the sonic running skills is gonna teach us how to run. And it turns out just by running in place for a moment, you can build up the speed you need to run fast. Who would have thought? And one reason I love this category is that we get the instant dash, because in the normal oh, any percent run, precious. you don't get the instant dash because it takes way too long to get it. Four. For how much it would save. The I think it would probably only save like maybe a couple of minutes over the run the and it takes dash. look how long it's already been just yes, to go through all these cutscenes. Alright, okay, you ready for this start? name? It's, it's awesome. To use it, simply <laughs> press your yeah, what is rapid it? Discharge, rapid, rapid discharge motion. The instant dash <laughs> Attain the highest the speed instantly. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, by using both together, you can crash through weak walls without a runway. Now you can lay out the boom in places where it wasn't previously possible to do so. Oh sure, now she's using my lines. This is also the last anyway, time we have one of these cutscenes. Because we learned all the abilities that you can learn. We learned how so to save, everyone. even though that we didn't see it in the run. We learned how to save. Now we can just run whatever we want. It's great. Well, I, I don't know. They didn't learn how to swim, which is apparently a somewhat common thing if you live like in Tokyo. Is that learning to yeah. swim is not something you normally do? All the all the anime class, all the anime um, series when you're they're in high school. There's always some episode about swim class. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently that's just not, like, mandatory for most people. I don't know, I think learning how to swim is a wonderful skill to have. That's just Oh, me. yeah, definitely. I think it's very handy, just in case. Yeah. Learning how to run, though, that's hard. I, I can swim, <laughs> I can't run. <laughs> I can run, but not run well. All right, so we're actually we're gonna do this dungeon, but we're not gonna complete it because uh, doing the boss uh, makes the skip later that we want to do impossible, and we want to do the next dungeon as late as we can because we otherwise we'd have to go to it twice, and I don't want to go to it twice. So now with our instant dash, we can break down these brittle vines just to get around. Go. And this is like a foo heavy dungeon, I would say, because uh, you do need her arrows to clear certain parts. Come on, there we go. 
sometimes it's really easy to get stuck on corners because the movement's a bit loose. And that's actually like, one thing I really love about this game is how imprecise the movement is. But you can just get stuck on corners sometimes trying to get out of them. There we go. Let's see, you're just gonna be in the way, aren't you? And then we have to open up this ladder here. Otherwise, if you miss that, you have to go all the way back to the start of the dungeon and do that. Because you need that to progress through the dungeon. And it's kind of weird, but I guess it promotes exploration. And here's um, Ab Abner. Yeah, or, no, not Abner. Alto. That's it. He totally doesn't look like someone else we've seen before who summoned monsters and stuff. And we're like, yeah, no problem. You can join us. You're out here. Let's clear that. All right, T.I.L. that goes through that barrier. Huh? I said T.I.L. that go the magic goes through that run barrier. Oh yeah, magic goes through everything. <laughs> Although it causes a lot of lag, it's easier than dealing with the enemies. Okay, I need to start taking damage, because we do have the Death Warp in this dungeon, and the enemies that you have the Death Warp off of in the end are painfully slow, because they only do one point of damage. Okay. Take care of you. Bye, Omi. Fu's the one I'm try I try to be a bit more cautious about on that, because I don't want her to die. Right, because you need food to hit some of the stuff on. Yeah. With her arrows that you. to get through the dungeon. So if she dies, then. Because eh, the magic don't hit them, I think. Yeah. There we go. Uh, magic might hit them, actually. I've never tried. It's just faster to not do that. Okay. I'll take a hit there. I don't think there's anything here, yeah. Okay, that works. So that works out really well. Ooh, that's a laggy room. Ooh, that was crunchy. Okay, we got the last one. And now we just need to take a few hits here. Yeah, these guys only surprisingly only do one damage. Very, <laughs> very helpful, rare in this right? game that things do one damage. Okay, and yeah, we're, we don't. There's a boss in this dungeon. It's I like the boss a lot. Um, this is probably my favorite dungeon in the game, just because I like the movement a lot. I like that there's just like a lot of little movement. And it flows really well, but in the normal route, uh, we skip it completely because there's no reason to do it. And we just skip the boss. Uh, one, it's slower to do the boss and do all the the cutscenes afterwards, and also it, it prevent us from doing a skip that we're gonna do coming up. Let's see, there's one more rainbow amulet in the library I need to get that I don't get before coming here, just because it's faster to get it on the way out. And you just not, need to not forget that. And then, let's see, in the next area there's two I want to get. So yeah, normally here we'd see Alcyon at the top and she'd have a party formed like ours with her and two monsters. And it's it's an it's interesting fight, but it's really long. <laughs> yeah, it's long. Um, the one, the issue with that fight is the one part of it can only be damaged when it attacks, because otherwise it has iframes on it. Like you attack it, and it has iframes until it attacks you, basically. 
and um, then it can also heal itself, and it does a lot of damage. So it's just a little annoying. It take down the HP of all three parts of the bosses. So, you know, we still get to see the um, awesome cool skip here. <laughs> yeah, in just the a moment. Boulder, boulder skip. There's a couple of what rainbow amulets I need to get here first. Oh yeah. Actually, explore this. This area, this map is bigger than I always like think it is. Yeah, it's actually pretty sizable. There's a lot to explore down here. Like, there's that health upgrade there. There's a couple of rainbow amulets. Uh, there's a dungeon down here that we can't access yet uh, because we didn't fight the boss in the previous dungeon. But we'll be going in through the back entrance later. We're going to be coming back later because we need a, a magic that we haven't unlocked yet to get one of the rainbow amulets. And it's better just to go do it once instead of twice. All right, so now we're going to do the map glitch here, which will give us, which will do some interesting things. Uh, it's a one-frame trick, so I have to press the map, uh, the map overworld button, which you haven't seen yet. But like you see, us transition from place to place. You can actually go there whenever you're in a town. And there's a glitch where if you exit a cutscene and press the map button uh, at the correct at, at, at the correct frame. Uh, you get the map sprites while being uh, in this screen. And it does interesting things like it displaces you in this map to let us go past this boulder barrier. And like I said, it's a one frame trick, so it's kind of, so I have to just try it a few times and eventually I'll get it. Like, it's funny, before, before the run I was practicing it and I was getting it every single time too. <laughs> it's not I had a always feeling, does. <laughs> yeah, I always had a feeling that was gonna happen. And I kind of have a visual cue for it. Ah, I overmashed. I got it the first frame, and then I pressed it again. Or I got it the first time I pressed it, and then I pressed it again because I pressed it twice out of habit. So I have to try it again now. And see, like whenever if you if you overmash it and fail it, you have to wait a long time to get back into the area because it has to load the overworld map and then load back into here. There we go. So now we just want to press upright a little bit, because if we press it, if we go up too far, we'll go completely out of bounds, because right there we're just kind of in between bounds. And in this state, uh, we can just go straight to the next area. Uh, that uh, path, that, that cave there is the end of the dungeon that we skipped. And we will be going there later. We will be doing the map glitch one more time. Let's see. Oh, I didn't get the fix. Okay, so I have to exit the, I have to, I have to go back to Lack Attack and come back into this town. Uh, if you press confirm on a sp on a specific frame uh, when you're when you exit the area and load the world map, it'll uh, it'll fix your map glitch. Because uh, if you go to a new area while under the effects of the map glitch, it doesn't connect the two points on the map. And thanks for the cats, Kirby. And there's a fix. There's like, if you, like I said, if you press confirm on the correct frame, it fixes that so that it shows the transition on the world map instead of just going straight to the next area. So we have to go back here and go back there to connect the, the points. So now we're in Liquida, which is also uh, beset under their own monster problem. But... It's a, a lot kinder than the usual monsters. But it's still a problem for the villagers. So there's uh, two more rainbow lamps here. That kid was very rude. There's one on this bench here, and then there's one in a tree up here. And now we're going to have a little glitch that happens because of the of skipping uh, Lack Attack Falls. Uh, for whatever reason, it acts like there's voice hacking here, so we have to wait for their mouths to play out and do their thing. Uh, normally that doesn't happen in a casual playthrough, but when you do that skip and skip that dungeon, for whatever reason, it, it, it does mouth movements like there's voice acting here, even though Working Designs did not dub it.
But luckily, this is the only cutscene that does that. I have no idea why, because no, you can talk to the other NPCs before coming, t talking to him, and this is the only cutscene that does it. So the kid's pretty upset that the monster broke his mom's arm indirectly, just because the, the monster is like so large and causing tremors that a bookshelf fell on his mom's arm and broke it. Like, it's healing, but the kid's pretty upset about it and wants revenge, as all kids do. And, of course, who are, who, we are the heroes, so we don't get a good night's rest. Yes, if I recall, Clamp actually did the artwork for the sprites in this game. Like, they actually did all the, the drawing for the sprites and animating it. I remember reading that somewhere. So, like, their style really carries through the game because of that. So there's this mysterious island here uh, that's apparently alive, because we can hit these buttons and... And the island actually floats, I guess, or something. And this is a two-parter dungeon where we have to collect two uh, amulets, uh, one on each side. There's like an east and west side. And this dungeon is actually pretty difficult in the US version. In the Japanese version, it's super easy because the enemies only do like one to two points of damage. But in the US version, most enemies do three to four, especially these chimeras here. And we take advantage of that, actually, because we want a death warp after we collect the amulets. But I'm trying not to take too much damage, because otherwise it gets pretty scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these... This is probably... Oh, snap. My, I flip-flop. I flip-flop my decisions on which dungeons I hate the most, depending on how I feel. Yeah, I've never... And, I've rarely uh, ever seen between... the enemy in the stairs there, and it's really annoying when it is. It's between this dungeon and the, uh, between this dungeon, the final dungeon, and, um, Inferno Mansion. For my least favorite dungeon. Um, Inferno Mansion, because I always get lost. <laughs> this dungeon, because it's very easy to die in when you don't want to. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, like, the enemies just do so much damage, and they also move faster than you can, especially in any percent when you can't run on demand. Um, and then Layer of Truth... This is the final the final dungeon of the game, where um, it you can also just kind of get bullied a little bit from the platforming again for any percent because um, you can't run on demand. Yeah. Okay. Now the chimeras are being extra aggressive today. Let's see, I'm just trying to be a little careful with my health because I don't want to die or before getting the. All right, with just Fu left, it's a little risky. She's got. She's got enough HP to take two hits. At yeah, least, so we're good there. She can there. take two hits from them, but you, if you're, if there's two chimeras on screen, you're you're taking two hits. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So take a hit there. I will be going back to those butterflies later, because there's enemy, there's enemies closer, but they only do one point of damage, and they're very slow in doing their damage. So here we get the first medallion, the sunrise medallion. The other one is the twilight medallion, and we actually need Honestly, those to was... summon the boss. This side was really smooth. Like those two, the two, the two first deaths you took were great, and then this one here, just one hit and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are some. Those are they're on fire. They're fire butterflies. You just kind of. Foomph. <laughs> Unfortunately, dying in this game is very, very safe. Uh, it just takes you back to the start of the dungeon. You get your health back. Uh, all your progress is, is saved, like if you've cleared any puzzles in like a dungeon where there are them, they stay cleared. Um, before we figured out that we could death warp, um, we actually picked up in the any percent, any percent run um, a number of rainbow amulets to then get a, a thing called the escape jewel, which could send you back to the start of the dungeon when you use it, but then we found out, wait, you can just die, and that's Basically, just, that's, that's faster because you don't need to spend time picking the rainbow amulets up, and there's no death penalty for, like, anything. Yeah, <laughs> and you also don't have to go out of your way to the rainbow junction shop. Yes, because that's another two loading screens you have to wait through on the 
world map. Oh, yeah. and, oh four loading screens. And, and, and traveling on the map, too, which is fairly yes, slow. Yes, and traveling on the map. But that was that was routed out pretty early. I, it was even before the skips were found that that got routed out. Yeah. Okay, there we go. I'm always almost always going to get hit by a chimera there. They're pretty mean. Like, they're super fast. They deal a lot of damage. They're just aggressive monsters, but it works to our favor. See, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that, I guess. Not even getting the safety, look at you go. I never get the safety. See, I don't when I don't get the safety, I lose my run. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm worth, just not I've as done cool a lot of a runner as Shen Talk you. is. What was that? I said I've done a lot more runs. <laughs> yeah, you have Shen Talk's a cooler runner than me, he actually plays the game. <laughs> take care of those just because they're in the way take a hit there that's fine so normally you're supposed to set that tree on fire and then put it out to get past it but we're not going to do that all right my health is actually set up perfectly nice that is perfect all right so we got both medallions and now we can just get out of here The rare on the SNES, that's a turn-based RPG, isn't it? Yes. That's what I thought, and it has, like, that isometric view in battle or something like that. I've something never actually like played it's... it, but I've seen screenshots. It's been longer than... I mean, it's probably been about the same time since I've seen the anime that I've played the Super Famicom version of, uh, the, <laughs> of the game. But I know, I remember, the one thing I remember is that it runs a little closer plot-wise to the anime. Like, the big thing I remember is the Spring of Eternum, which we don't see in this run. Um, it actually has the comment from the anime that, oh, it's a two-dimensional spring, you can't see it from the side. Um, that whole uh, thing. In this, in this game, you just walk to it from the top in general, and they never comment that you can't see it from the side. Um, yeah. But in the Super Famicom, they actually do have that, like, little plot point. I yeah, should never, play through never it told me that, I would have never known. You should watch the anime. It's good. I Just should. the first I'm season, bad though. bad about watching anime. I know. Who watches anime, right? <laughs> so, we find the kid Nero. Finds out that this giant turtle monster uh, has taken him hostage. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna beat him up. Because that's what we do as the Magic Knights. We just beat up everyone. And fortunately, I'm pretty fat, doing doing pretty good on the magic swap, so that he's just not moving at all. There we go. But this boss does take a lot of damage. Um, if you're playing through this game casually, it's actually faster to use Umi's charged attack instead of your her magic. Um, it does this, it does the same amount of damage, I believe, but you're not stuck uh, waiting on the animation pauses. And the turtle, the, mo the monster's crying, and we're gonna use Mokona as a way to communicate with it and find out that it's actually a good monster. It's just been causing a lot of damage trying to shake off the, the trees and shrubbery that's grown on its back from sleeping for so long. And for some reason, Fu levels up. <laughs> and no idea why. Because she doesn't learn anything from this. Usually, like, when they level up, it's because they learn something. Or grew in some way. And now we're going to the the floating city of uh, Aria. I don't I don't remember how it's actually pronounced because it's it's a complicated word. There's a lot of vowels in it in a row. <laughs> Words are hard. Imagine talking. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So here we need to get access to the Heaven's Labyrinth, uh, but we can't because the mayor has locked the in the only entrance and decided that no one's allowed in. So we're gonna go talk to him, and he, he's gonna throw us out because he's a good he's a good guy like that. He's like, you want to see it? No way. No one's allowed to see it. I'm just going to throw you out. So now we're going to stay at a plot in and like, it's like our reasoning is that maybe if we sleep, if we take a maybe if we wait till tomorrow, he'll be in a better mood. And this area has the most rainbow amulets of any area in the game. There are seven here, I believe. There's two here, that, and then there's five more we're going to collect later. And we're like the first vi visitors to this sky town in a long time because the turtle that was acting as a conduit between the land and here was sleeping for a long time. So there was just no way to get up here. So now we're gonna go see the mayor again, and the key has been stolen. And for whatever reason, uh, we're blamed for it, despite coming here and asking for it. Apparently, it's all our fault. And it's not an RPG without a sneaking section. We get to go metal your solid on this game and uh, sneak through some guards that are very narrow sighted. Their peripheral vision is just awful. <laughs> And we're specifically as Boo right now because uh, this cutscene uh, places you where your character is standing in that cutscene. And Fu is closest to the exits. Very minimal time save, but you know you take every every little bit you can get. Because for whatever reason, Fu knows how to pick locks. She's just ultra talented like that. But I'm gonna. There's a fast start. I'm gonna try once. If I don't get it, I'm gonna. Do, uh, if you get caught, you basically get started from here and get a long cutscene about getting out again. Cause uh, it's like you get out once. It's like there's no way they're gonna get out again. Yeah, the lock's even easier the second time. I'm surprised you're you're going for the fast start. I, I'm always. Too, I'm. I can't even do it on run attempts. I'm too nervous to do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay on getting it. I'm always going to try it at least once, because if I get it, then great. So the first room is very easy. The guards are always on a specific cycle. Every All the guards are always on a specific cycle, but uh, they're pretty easy to navigate around it, if you're, even if you're slow. Um, here, there's a guard here that has very long vision that you don't see the first time, but he comes into view. And you're supposed to, there's an alcove there you're supposed to get into to get past, to wait for him to walk by again. But we're going to try to sneak past him. Ah, I bumped into him. So he like, didn't even, bump... like, do the reaction. Wow. Yeah. Oh, because if you bump into them, they don't do the reaction. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It didn't even look... It's like, like, it's like you just brushed, like, one pixel on it. Yeah. Basically, if, there's that, if they bump off that corner, it touches him. And that's what happened. I was too close to the corner and got bumped off of it. But if you get past him there, it skips like a bunch of cycles between that guy waiting for that guy to walk back around and also the next guard. And so if you get caught, you have to do all this cutscene again. As and this is why I only usually try it once and the second time around I just do it the slower way. Cause I don't really want to repeat this cutscene again and again. But the like the cycles are don't start until you enter the room, so they're always going to be one hundred percent consistent. Yeah, now waiting on this guy. All right, now we just got to wait on this guy here, and we can just run across, hugging this wall over here, because the guard can't see us running across there. They're narrow sighted and their vision isn't isn't very far. They're not near they're not near sighted, but 
they they don't see far enough to catch us. Oh, this entire game is ice physics. I love it. It's wonderful. I'm a big fan of slippery movement in games. That's why I run this game. So now we're just going to do it the casual way where we just hide in this alcove here, waiting for this dude to come back around. Like a common theme with games I run is games with loose movement, and this game has that in spades. Uh, you can also, if you skip the first guy cycle, you can skip this guy cycle. Uh, basically, there's a corner up there you can run into and bypass getting past him, and that one's a lot easier to do. You just have to hug this wall here, and th that guard won't see you. But we're just going to do this the slow way, wait for this guy to walk by, go down, hug the wall, so the other guy above doesn't see us. Yeah, I usually do that one. I tend to follow the dude and, uh, scoot up into the wall right before he turns around. And somehow yeah. he doesn't see you, or you don't bump into him. Yeah. So, this is, uh, the first time in the game where, uh, which character you, you are when interacting with an object matters. Uh, a thing with this game is every character has unique flavor text when inspecting objects. And Fu is the only one that sees that there are footprints going to and from the fireplace. So yeah, she has glasses, we... so she sees the best. Yeah. And here we find Fario's flute, who she's in love with still. And we're going to find Fario with some mysterious woman who totally doesn't look like Alcyone in a cape. Or in a hood. <laughs> Okay, and now we're going to get a bunch more rainbow amulets. There's five up here to collect. Uh, one, two, three, four, and number five behind the building here. There's just a random kid here. It's like, hey, you found me. I'll give you this if you don't tell anyone where I am. And then, for whatever reason, Rafarga's here. He's like, why don't you just wait by the gate and see who comes and, and uses the key? So now we're just going to be uh, staking out the gate for a little while. And all we do is just see people walking by. You know, people watching. That's what you do. See, those I people totally... are on a date, and Fu's jealous. <laughs> and then there's you know, I never slow, realized that before. I thought man. she was just like frustrated with waiting, not because they were on a date. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you she's all that. she's all she's all down bad for Fario, and he's 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 cheating on her right now, and so she sees him on a date, and she's like, "Nah, fam, I don't like that." Yeah. And so they open up the gate and go on in, and it's like, "Oh no." Ferio is actually doing is, is actually the culprit. All right, now we're going to this dungeon. In the ampersand run, we actually skip this dungeon sort of. There's a specific jump you can do in the first room that messes with uh, the loading for the next room. Like it loads the next room in terms of appearance, but it loads the collision and loading zones of another area, which lets you, which takes you right to the end of the dungeon. But yeah, since we actually need a... rainbow ambulance here, we have to do it normally. Yeah, not only do we need the rainbow ambulance, but we also need uh, Fu's final spell from this area. Because yeah. we need that for other rainbow amulets later on. Yep. Or, like, when we go back, when we go to some other dungeons, there's rainbow amulets in there. Um, yeah, this there's was two the amulets first... that said require it. Yeah, this was the first skip found when uh, this game was kind of being played around with by uh, Mijitsu. He found a similar sort of skip where if you get hit by enemies, sometimes you get sent way across the room. I call that the yeet glitch because you get yeeted across the room. And yeah. it was first was trying to find out if we could replicate it regularly to always send you across like this room so you don't need to do the uh, platforming and whatnot but then while playing around he also found uh, the jump the uh, skip at the first thing when trying to jump over the barriers unfortunately that's the only part 
only dungeon that has that skip in it where you jump over a loading zone and it loads another room in it. We've we've tried. <laughs> we've tried jumping all over the place, but this is the only one, unfortunately. Yeah. So I'm just killing that enemy there while waiting for this platform because there's nothing you can do to speed up this cycle. Let's see. Wow, he's actually in a really good spot, but I'm still going to kill him because I can't get past him. <laughs> okay, there we go. But I do like this dungeon a lot. The movement's really nice. The music's good. Let's see, four enemies here. Let's see if I can kill them in one hit. For whatever reason, lately, I haven't been able to kill them all in one cast, lately. And I'm not sure why. Birds! There we go. I wonder if there's, like, a sprite overload or something. I don't think so, because I used to be able to when I ran, when, when this dungeon was still in the route. I used hmm. to be able to just uh, kill them all in one cast. There we go. Oh, let's get that. Another rainbow amulet. Okay, now I just gotta wait on the cycles. Ah, I could have made that. But I jump. I, I think I hesitated too much on my jump. So I'm just gonna wait for it to realign. There we go. And then annoyingly, there's these flying enemies that... Okay, good, they didn't knock me off. Uh... No! For whatever reason, it killed my killed my momentum. Oh, no. <laughs> this room's the worst. Yeah. I this room mean... is the worst! There we go. I'm gonna grab that land there in case I get knocked off again. Okay. Whatever. We made it. We got it. <laughs> I, I can't have food die because I need her. Let's see. Now we can do that. As you notice, it's a very expensive spell to cast, but... So we can only technically cast it once, but thanks to the magic swap glitch, we can just cast it whenever we feel like it. There we go. And the downside to it is that you can't uh, do the instant dash while you're in this uh, form. So let's go swap. Swap. Actually, I know I need to be as her. That's the way I think I need. Yeah, that's the way I need to go. There's one more here. Just gonna kill this enemy because otherwise he's just gonna be in the way. Awesome. All right, and we got all the rainbow amulets here. I'm pretty sure. I feel like I should have waited for the animation to finish, but I think I'll be fine. Are you sure you'll be fine? This is what I warned you about. Eh. Let it be on record <laughs> that I did collect that amulet. <laughs> Regardless of what the the game may tell me later. Yeah, so we'll we'll be checking near the end of the run to make sure in the menu to uh, make sure that we actually picked up all the rainbow amulets. Um, I mean, sometimes you kinda, if you, you go have no too choice fast, anyways. Hmm? oh, you have no choice but to check it anyway since you have to get the escape gem. Yeah, so um, uh, sometimes the game doesn't completely load that you get one if you go too fast when leaving the room after picking up the treasure chest. And, uh, I've had to have Shentok give me proof that, yes, I picked up every single rainbow amulet, and here's proof, like, in pictures that I got them. And then we figured out that, oh, it just kind of puts it back in the chest, kind of, if you leave and come back. You, know, you, have, to, and, you have to quit the game and come back in. Quit the game and come back in? Wow, okay. Yeah, and you have to know which one it was that you missed. <laughs> but uh yeah it turns out uh fairy was under mind control uh by alcyon and now we find out that rafarga is under mind, a more powerful mind control by zagat but he's fighting it and he walks off the edge of this cliff uh trying to fight it 
But Alcyon here, she's like, I'm not done yet. I'm still here. And now we get to fight a uh, giant bird. But this bird is a broken fight. Uh, not normally, but in a speedrun it is. Uh, for whatever reason, if we just stand over here, the boss's AI breaks and it just does, it just spins around in a circle for the rest of the fight. Like, we can leave the this, this section and it'll, the AI will return to normal. It's the strangest thing. Okay. Don't mess up too much. There we go. Yeah, because Fu doesn't have any magic either, right? No, she does. Oh, she does have some left, okay. Well, I, sure I refill everybody. Oh yeah, because you're soft the fountain, duh. It's just yeah. more annoying to switch your grip for switching between Fu and Umi instead of Ikaru and Umi. Yeah. So this fight is actually like, I won't say tough, but it's an annoying fight casually. Because he can like push you off the cliff and stuff and just take damage and flies all around. And if you're using physical attacks, you can't hit him in the air, but magic uh, is altitude agnostic. <laughs> <laughs> Big words. And it's it's an interesting fight casually, just in the speed run, why not do it the fast way? Where the boss doesn't do anything because it doesn't know what to do. And here we find Fu's ancient uh, machine uh, named Wyndham. I had to think about that. So the only, only machine left is Hikaru's. Which we oh, haven't Hikaru, found yet. She's, last. she's, she's yeah. the main main girl, but she's last. Yeah, well, that's why she's last. Unless, of course, you do the true any percent route, then uh, she's she's the only one you get. <laughs> <laughs> There's a true true any percent route in this game where you go straight to the Cast final the dungeon. It's a very path. difficult trick His to do. Much stronger than we had anticipated. And the dungeon is increase, is especially How difficult when you're at level zero because you only have three health and everything does four health number. damage. I pray you do not fail. So you have to get through it without exactly dying. As you desire. And you can just go straight to the end of the game. So now Innova is uh, mobilizing, finally. Because Innova is basically uh, Zagat's right-hand person. I won't say man, because he's actually not human. <laughs> he is man's best friend. Yes. So, you know, Fer Ferio just hex off. We don't see him until later. But for whatever reason, this takes us where we need to go. This is an elevator straight to some guy's house in the middle of the woods. No idea why. I think it but just kind of follows is. where... You know, plot reasons, it's kind of follows where, uh, what do you call it? Rafarga Ref fell down. Yeah. So, Rafarga fell down, we thought he was dead, turns out he just has amnesia. Uh, you know, when you, when you fall from that height, all you get is just a bit of amnesia and a bump on the head. You know, nothing serious. No, nothing bad. Whoops. Talk to him. Okay, now we gotta talk to this old guy here. He's like, how to restore his memory. And it's like, oh yeah, there's the Tree of Life. Uh, they have medicine that can that can cure anything. And even though we didn't actually get the, the leaf, um, they got it on their own. They didn't need us. They're perfectly fine. We just totally left in the middle of their, of their request and never came back. And the game's like, yeah, no problem. Uh, we're just gonna give it to you. Because uh, this game has like kind of a seniority on... Uh, Plot triggers, uh, where uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Where the the mo the 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 one that's like the furthest along in the story is gonna always take seniority for plot, which is really helpful because we do a lot of things out of order, and if we could and uh, if we couldn't do things out of order, it'd make things a lot less interesting. <laughs> So 
so Athena here, she gives us the medicine. It's like, yeah, no problem. And uh, apparently we're the ones who got it, even though we didn't. <laughs> and now we need to go all the way back to Rafarga after getting the medicine to help uh, restore his memory. Sadly, your Farga is not a, not as uh, is not as uh, complex as a TV. He's a simple man. He needs simple. Me he needs complex medicine. <laughs> so uh, his memories come back, but uh, now he has a splitting headache. And he's just kind of waiting for us to come outside before walking off again. And uh, a little hidden path here in the forest is clearing. And bam, Minova shows up. And gives Rafarga some armor and, and a weapon. And he can't resist the mind control anymore. Halcyon shows up too. The whole, the whole gang's here. But uh, Alcyon tries to fight Rafarga and ends up getting a fatal wound in her stomach because of it and just yeah. disappears. And Nova's like, yeah, you take care of this. Because uh, Alcyon, you know, we're her rivals. And she wants to be the one to defeat us to prove her worth to, to Zaygod. But Nova's like, no, you failed way too much. So uh, Rafarga, go, go stab her. Yeah. So Rafarga, being a human-type enemy, has iframes, so we can't just chain cast, unfortunately. We do have yeah. to wait for him to stop flashing. And in some and cases, he even... spell himself, he, he has iframes until his eyes open up again. Yeah. So, he's a little slower than... Maybe the previous few bosses that were all monster types, and in there too, he had he had iframes during his flashing attack as well. And while he's changing colors, he has iframes. <laughs> iframes, iframes, iframes. <laughs> the word of this fight is iframes. Yeah. There we go. Should be almost dead. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Two hits after turning red. You know, I've never counted before. Neither did I, until now. Yeah, and now he's like, please, just kill me, I can't resist they got anymore. And Nova does it for us. Because, you know, Hikaru, she's the... What do you call it? Protagonist, where she thinks, you know, every, save everybody. And I think this is kind of when... No, it's actually, it's the, next, it's the, next fo the next boss, so I'll leave my thought there until the next boss, and then I'll say it. Yeah. Uh... This, this story is very tragic overall. Uh, everyone's dying around us because we're trying to uh, save, supposedly save Princess Emerald. That's what we were told to do. But everyone has to, is dying because of because of our actions. And it's hey, something the volcano also, erupted. Yeah, it's also something shown, shown in the anime where uh, the Magenites are going town to town and, you know, bad, you know, monsters come, bad stuff happens and they kind of get blamed a couple times for the bad stuff. Like, before you came here, everything was o okay, but now it's worse. In a yeah. way. And now we're going to a location that you're only ever going to see in this run, where uh, we're going to get an item called the Escape Gem, which lets us escape from dungeons. And there's a couple of dungeons where it's really, really handy to have. Oh, right. I forgot to uh, open my inventory. Uh, your item count doesn't refresh until you open your inventory. This game is super fun casual. I love it. So the volcano erupted near Polyzoo, and now Polyzoo is in ruin because of it. And there is a rainbow amulet here, too. There's a kid that has one. That he's like, I found this on the ground. You want it? And we're like, sure, whatever. <laughs> we'll take it. Thank you. I always
always would recommend emulating it or modding a Saturn and playing it off a backup copy. Uh, I do not recommend people purchasing this game. It is way too expensive. Uh, unless you're, unless you really like this game or really like Rare Earth or just really like collecting games, um, this game is extremely expensive for the U.S. version now. Uh, you can get the yeah. Japanese version for a decent price, but um, then it's in in Japanese. Oh, if you can read Japanese, it's great. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And now I, here I bought, we see the Caro's dog. <laughs> I bought my Japanese version for five dollars. It's a lot so more expensive than that nowadays. I think it's yeah, like 30 it's or 40 gone up now. Alright, so now we learn the most powerful magic in the game, Flash, which is just the name of Karu's dog. Uh, right. I wanted to do that. So, I just do that for safety, because these enemies are kind of like jerks. See, look at that, he's already trying to hit me. There we go. So there's a lot of rainbow amulets in here as well. There's three in this room alone, and then three more to get? Yeah. This dungeon is actually kind of cool. Uh, oh, I'm not in the right spot. Oh well, doesn't matter. I'm still not in the right spot. Okay, never mind, it does matter. <laughs> oh, the Saturns? No, they're, they're built like tanks. They do not break down. Come on, that lag. holy moly, that's Crunchy. a lot of lag. Because this guy's following me, that's why. Yeah. That enemy does not normally follow me because I usually go the right way. Bye, Omi. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that will normally go bad on the Saturn is a laser, and if you're familiar with adjusting lasers, it's fixable. You can also buy flash devices to uh, play off SD cards. There's, there's no time, no better time than now to own a Saturn. You must play the Sega Saturn. Yes. Another rainbow amulet here. Ha! Ah, I got it in the air. And for whatever reason, we can just go through that wall there. You're not supposed to be able to go through that. You're supposed to go around, but hey, we can just walk right through it. No problem. And if you're really low on HP, you can use Umi's water spell to cool off that fountain there, which is kind of nifty. The Sega CD, yeah, the Sega CDs are problematic. Uh, usually, if you have an older one, they just need new capacitors. Uh, the Model 2s are a lot more stable. Uh, there we go. So normally, you're supposed to wait for these platform cycles. Uh, we can just float past them, no problem. Having the protective wind in this dungeon is extremely helpful because, again, platforms, if you fall off a platform, you go back to the last solid ground you were on, and yep. these platforms move slowly, the, the, the fire worms are all around, and in the any percent run of this game, you don't have instant dash, and the game expects you to have instant dash, so some of those platform jumps are barely reachable when you're not running. Yeah. So now here we find uh, Ray Earth, uh, the final machine, and we also find uh, Alcyone, who's bleeding to death. After, and she also found out that Zagot's actually in love with the princess that she's captured. And Alcyone, who's in love with Zagot, is just terribly broken over it. And she's like, yeah, just uh, I, I want to end you once and for all. So now we have the most powerful spell in the game, which defeats any boss in three hits. Uh, the catch is that it casts 10 mana to cast, but with Magic Swap Twitch, it doesn't matter, because we do not have enough mana to cast it, because we skipped so much of the game. Like, we have 8 mana right now, and it's 10 to cast. And she's not being very kind on luck. Usually, she'll stay in screen instead of, and not do a different attack, but she's being mean. But 3 hits, she's gone. No problem. And she has to go to the center and fall down. Yep. And now we're pretty upset because all these people are dying around us that didn't need to die, and it was all because we showed up, but 
we have no choice but to show up because otherwise the whole world is gonna die because of the princess. I don't own a virtual boy. Yet. I don't want one. I played Yet. one when I was a kid because a friend of mine had one and the, and the only good game I played on it was Wario Land. I don't even remember. Game. I don't even remember what game my friend had on his virtual boy. It's probably just Mario Tennis or something. He had my friend had a few games. He had Mario Tennis, uh, Wario Land, and the Mario Brothers game. And I definitely played Wario Land the most. Yeah, we're just about at the point of the game that's all lining back up with the anime. Um, there's going to be a couple cutscenes that kind of show that. Because in the middle of this game, the animated cutscenes kind of stop for a while and they pick up again near the end. And also, if you if you squint, you can see some quality differences. Because I do believe there were a few animated cutscenes just made for the game. Possibly, maybe. I've never really 100% checked on that. Like the one where you see Rafarga looks like it was made for the game because it looks a lot cleaner than any other uh, cutscene. It, does, it looks like it was made for the game rather than taken from a digital and being a digital transfer from the film. Yeah. So this is about I don't know when. Um, whenever the cutscene started up again is when the game kind of started realigning with how the anime goes, more or less, just enough to use the cutscenes, I'd say. Um, yeah. But the whole middle part really deviates from how the anime goes, and then the manga is a whole different like way it, the same basic story you know but it's told a little bit differently all right so now we're doing now that we can technically go to the end of the game but we have to do some backtracking since this is all rainbow amulets uh there's one in taflon that we couldn't get previously uh because we needed the instant dash and the pulverizing dash to get it Because, like, you can technically get it with the Pulverizing Bash, but it's a lot harder since you don't have enough room to do running speed. Alright. Uh... Wait. Yeah, it's right here. For some reason, I thought the pathway was shorter. Okay, avoid that health. There we go. Because if I grab that health, uh, there's a death warp I have to do later where it'll take longer. It'll take an extra hit on Hikaru. <laughs> okay, and then there's three more in the Crimson Underpass that we have to go through here for. Oh, Saturn Bomberman's amazing. Uh, a couple of our last RPG limit break, I got like eight players together to play it at the event. It was wonderful. Couldn't get the full 10 just because it was how, it was late at night, but it was such a fun time with eight people. It was just pure chaos. Okay, up here. Okay, good. I didn't go the wrong way. Sometimes I'll accidentally turn early and just hit a dead end. Let's see, switch to that. Alright, so there's one in here that we couldn't get our first time through. The other two we could have, but it flows better in my mind to get them later. Because they're all... This is, this is basically the two are on the way to the third one. So, like, there's one here that's just easily available. Super easy to get. And then there's one you need the Pulverizing Bash for. And then this one where we need the protective wind because you can't you can't make that jump. I've tried. Of course you've tried. <laughs> okay. And then we can use the escape gem to get out of here. And then we can't we can't fast travel in a dungeon, so we have to exit out of it. And then next, we're doing the one dungeon we do, we're doing one of the dungeons we skipped. Um, 
we did a skip earlier called the map uh, called the map glitch, and we're gonna be doing it again uh, because it's faster than if assuming you get it quickly enough, it's faster than going than going to um, the next town and walking back. So hopefully I'll get I'll get it the second time around more quickly than I did the first time. Because this is a one frame trick. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what my spell's on. So yeah, we get to try this again. And this is like, I, I kind of like that this category makes you do it twice. Because, like, I don't really like doing this trick, but I like the results of it, where you just get small and like this. <laughs> You're so tiny and small, and it looks funny. Yeah. And so now we're just going to enter this dungeon from the back, because we can't actually enter it from the front. Because if we try to enter this dungeon from the front, uh, there's, no, there's no entrance, because uh, you're supposed to enter this dungeon through a cutscene. And instead, we just enter from the back, go straight to the final boss of this dungeon. But we're not going to actually fight this boss, we're going to take an intentional death here, because it's faster than actually fighting the boss. If we fight the boss, uh, we get some cutscenes afterwards, and we have to re-enter the dungeon again from this side. But if we die, it just takes us to the start of the dungeon. Like, no problem. And, uh, yeah, so we fight Caldina again, and she kills Ascot by accident. Uh, Ascot has mended his evil ways, and, uh, Alcyone, who's dead, comes back from the grave to just meddle in the affairs here. We just try to hug Caldina. Yeah. You know, we don't want to kill her, too, so we're just gonna try to hug her. It's not working. <laughs> yeah, the chibi mode's a glitch. Okay, give me hits. So if I accidentally grab that extra health in uh, Taflon, it would take four hits to kill a carrier. Don't want that. Alright, so now we can do this dungeon. We're not going to complete this dungeon, of course, uh, but there are four rainbow amulets in here we need. And I don't particularly care for this dungeon, but I do like the rainbow amulet collection. Like, because there's one puzzle in here that's kind of clever. Whereas most of the puzzles in this game are pretty simplistic, there's actually one puzzle in this game that's clever to do. And it's actually the first rainbow amulet we get. There we go. So yeah, like this almost the entire dungeon is just pushing stuff onto switches. And we even have there's even a couple of areas where we have to lure enemies into switches, which is pretty obnoxious, especially since they rely on luck for one of them. Okay. Now this is the clever puzzle right here. I like this one. We have to move the blocks in a certain way to move these balls that uh don't stop moving until they hit a solid object. Oh, there we go. So now I need to push this over. So basically we have to get one of these blue orbs onto uh, that switch. So we have to move that over there. No, no, you said the O word. <laughs> there we go. A lot of Sokobone. Okay, wait for that animation to finish. Just to be on the safe side. Okay, cool, I made that jump. And of course more pushing more of the blue orbs. But yeah, this dungeon is almost entirely uh, block pushing. So if you're if you're a big fan of Sokobon, uh, this is this is the dungeon for you. Except this is not as complex as, uh, as that game. Ah, uh, am I okay? Yes. 
Yeah, I guess I could have put just oh, push nice. it out of the way anyways. But I wanted to be sure. Uh, stop running. There we go. Pachinko balls. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Oh, right. I need to be... Foo. There we go. Switch my magic. Okay. okay, there we go. Got you. And here's here's why we want we save this dungeon a little later, because you cannot get this rainbow amulet without protective wind. And I don't know how they expect you to get out of here other than take a death, normally, because you don't have enough mana. I suppose they might expect you to have an, uh, a mana refill item. I don't know. Huh, I never... Like I... It's been so long that I never really realized that. I guess they expect you to refill your mana at that point. Yeah. It's so strange. Okay, so now we gotta lure this dragon over here. The dragons are super easy to lure. It's the uh, these mantis enemies that absolutely are rude. They'll follow you if they if they they'll pursue you if they see you, but their vision is super short. There we go. Although, is that the last? Um... Because if you're going through the game normally, you'd come back here later. Uh, so I think what I think casually it expects you to come back here later and use the escape gem to only get that jewel. That makes sense. Because you, you would have gone through here originally. That's how, that's how I think I did it when I played casually and I followed like the the guide on game facts. Is uh came back later. He had the escape gem. He used it after getting that one thing. That makes sense. Let's see, nope, that dude's being a jerk. Okay. So now we get to learn Umi's third spell, which we don't normally learn in the run, but we need it to open a door. Because it's the same exact thing as their level 2 spell, except it has the property of killing uh, invincible enemies. Which is like, whatever. Because it doesn't do- it's exactly the same as their level 2 spell in, e in every way. Same damage, similar length animation. Ooh, nice, now they're being kind in their positioning. Awesome. And it's only the only special use it has is killing those skeleton enemies. It's the only way that they die. Uh right. Oops. Would help if I jump. Okay, switch magic there. Awesome. And then there's uh, invisible walls here that you can see if you hit, if you hit the wall they appear, but uh, you just kind of have to just poke at the walls and see what shows up. There we go. I'm gonna grab this. And don't leave before it disappears. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to, because I still have one more to grab. Yeah. Well, I know, isn't that one you, that, that's one that's been, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, but it's because I would grab it, I would grab it last. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So this, I'm gonna wait for the animation to appear. Bam. Alright, and there's only three missing, so that means we have all of them so far. So instead of completing the dungeon, we're just gonna exit out.
no problem. But we can't enter the dungeon this way again, I believe, because uh, we ha we have to. We never got the cutscene that entered us in this dungeon in the first place. So yeah, this game gets a little weird when you do things uh, out of uh, order. It expects certain. Oh, you can enter the dungeon. Okay, never mind. Probably because we entered uh, the the fight. That's probably why it appeared. Uh, no, that's not what I want. I want that. There we go. So because we're still we're still map glitched, uh, we started us on a weird point in the map, and we're the large sprites instead of the chibi sprites. And now we're going someplace we've never been to before. You see his manor. And this is technically where you get dropped off at the start of the game after Tokyo Tower. So we're going to the beginning of the game after going through the rest of the game. Because there are three rainbow amulets here we need. It's going to change your spells. Spells are good. Okay. Yeah, the important part here is to make sure Hikaru is on her first spell for going through this dungeon because of it, the uh, cutscene at the end. Uh, there's something funny that happens if you don't have her... If you ever spell spells into Asetsa, not the first one. You know what? I'll set it to her her level three spell just to show it off. <laughs> I guess we have the time, so. Yeah. Uh, ah. Okay. Rude enemies. So this is a. Uh, if you're familiar with other games like um, Zelda Three, uh, this is a forest of confusion where you have to go through it in a certain way, otherwise you loop around endlessly. And uh, now we get introduced to Fairy for the first time. He's just some guy lost in the woods like us, and he tries to rescue us to look all manly and stuff. But it just comes off as a jerk. But for whatever reason, Fu falls for him early on. I'm not sure why. I don't know what she sees in him. Maybe it's the green hair. <laughs> You gotta have green hair. Green hair is great. I love my green hair anime. But he joins us, but as usual, he doesn't do anything. So I'm also careful to set uh, Fu to her level 2 spell, because her level 1 spell costs more mana, and at, there's, we're gonna be getting a cutscene that resets uh, Umi's and Fu's magic to their uh, their level 1 state, so they don't have access to their level 2 and 3 spells anymore. Because technically they're not supposed to have learnt magic yet when coming into the cutscene where they learn their first spells. So instead of uh, just giving you your level 1 spell, it uh, resets it so that you only have that one spell. So now we're hopelessly lost, uh, there's nowhere to go, and we're blaming Fario. He's like, I thought you knew this place. He's like, nope, I'm as lost as you. Yes, he is 100% the tuxedo mask cliche. He actually enters the battle with us and uh, doesn't do anything. He just stands there swinging the sword, nothing happens. But then he's like, I've been looking for the Magic Knights, and doesn't and we tell him was like, well, we're the Magic Knights. He's like, no, you're not. You're just some girl. You're just you're just three girls. <laughs> and then Makona shows us the way. And then we meet we see Alcyon again, who was basically was waiting for us to leave the forest because uh, this forest is special in that. Uh, all magic is nulled while you're inside of it, so Alcyone, being a magic caster, didn't want to encounter us in a, in a place where she would be in a position of weakness. And Ferio, he got hit by Alcyone's magic trap, I guess. And uh, Hikaru, we're all powered up, we're just going to cast our mo the most powerful magic in the game. Bam. No problem. Because it uses, it's surprisingly, it uses whatever magic you have equipped right now, rather than using her level 1 spell. And somehow she has enough mana to cast it multiple times. Maybe she, too, has learned the magic swap glitch. 
<laughs> that is, it's so funny to see that. It just doesn't do anything, because cutscenes. Because uh, yep. she's supposed to be using fire arrow, and she misses what happens. Yeah. Which, you, know, you can't miss with a, with a full screen attack. <laughs> and here, Umi learns her magic uh, through a cutscene. And then uh, Boo learns he that she has healing magic. And heals little stereos of uh, wounds. And of course, Clef is telling us, like, hey, you have the greatest power of all, you can heal people. And then Fu accidentally casts Protective Wind on Fario. <laughs> and he just has a bubble around him or something. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> So yeah, Fu is fallen for fa for Fario. Oh, whoops! Forgot to master that cutscene. <laughs> and Fu's just like, oh man, Fario's the hottest. Oh wow, boys! Oh wow, boys! <laughs> And then there's just one more rainbow amulet up here to pick up, and then we can leave this dungeon. Um, yep. This is technically where we're you know, supposed to learn our scudo, or get our scudo to get our weapons. Yeah, but... if you go up further, there's another cutscene, and then you all jump into the Fountain of Eterna, or Spring of Eterna. And uh, there's a series of boss fights there that you gotta fight to get your weapons, and that's how you're supposed to get your first, like, level up. And your yep. weapon from, uh, from Precia. Yeah, and that's what gives us our charge attack, which is just leveling up to level 1. <laughs> okay, yep, look at that. All rainbow amulets. There's eight of each. There's uh, eight colors, I think? Something like that. What's the? I don't know if you have the stream up, but what's the timer at right now? It's approximately 2.05 and a half. Oh, cool, we got plenty of time. There's some, I'm going to show you what you get for all the rainbow amulets after the run. Because we're going to be zooming right to the end. Yep, there's mm -hmm. there's nothing left except boss fights from here on out. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and make a save here. And some cutscenes. So, normally, Mokona is not supposed to be there in the chair. So the chair is supposed to be turned around and empty. There's supposed to be papers on the floor. Uh, basically, Mokona was used as a trap for her first time coming here. And we get trapped in a cage until we prove who we are. And Mokona joins us, and Precia gives our weapons. Um, in the anime, Precia is technically dead by this point. So, yay for her for finding a place where she can stay alive. <laughs> Yeah, in the anime, right after you get your weapons, I think it's Alcyon that attacks Precia's manor, and and destroys the manor and traps Precia under. And Precia's like, you know, go knights, run, leave me here, I'll be fine or something. And then she dies because she gets that stuck on a rock. That sounds like something Alcyon would do. So if you remember Innova from the cutscenes, we'll be uh, finally uh, dealing with him once and for all. Oh yeah, it's but been a he... while since we've watched those cutscenes, isn't it? Yeah. And we find Clef here uh, at the point of the game where we first landed in Sephiro. And Clef's still a stone statue. And Nova's like, I'm going to stop you here and now. Turns out he's not human. Turns out he was a he's an he's a he was a palace guard dog turned human by uh, Zagat. And for whatever reason, he's super loyal to Zagat, despite being supposed to be a guard a guard for the palace of Princess Emerald. Well, he's a dog. He's very loyal. I and guess Zagat, Zagat gave him thumbs. <laughs> thumbs are pretty great. I'm not gonna lie. They allow me to run this game. Like I'm using my thumb right now to hold the A button. So, this this guy has the most HP of any boss in the game, I believe. At like 160 HP or something like that. 
but due to the nature of the flash spell, uh, he always dies. Uh, he'll die in three hits. He also has variable length of iframes, so he can just kind of, you know, float around there with flashing. And once stops flashing, the iframes done. Um, yeah, he was actually kind of yeah. kind there on the iframes. Yeah, it was good timing. He, I, he was hiding up in the corner, so I, didn't, I barely saw them. Uh, I barely saw them fade out. But uh, yeah, he's very annoying because he moves around a lot and charges you and has iframes. If you don't, you know, magic glitch flash three times. Yeah, he's a fairly lengthy fight. It's a cool fight though. He does have some interesting attacks, but he's kind of like boring in how he moves around. So now everyone we met is like here is like, hey, we're cheering you on. And then here's the point of no return. Everyone like, we've met that we that hasn't died. You to make yep. sure you say that part of it. <laughs> oh yeah, everyone we met that hasn't died yet. And so now we summon our ancient machines that we've been uh, nurturing our strength for this entire game. And of course we get giant Gundams. Because what's an anime without giant robots? And we use them to assault Zagat's castle, which has been cloaked this entire time. And for some reason, summoning all three uh, ancient machines at once uh, disrupts Zagat's magic temporarily to allow us to find and destroy Zagat's cast barrier to his castle. It's like rock, paper, scissors. Zagat's magic beats emeralds. We beat Zagat's magic. Mm -hmm. And then... <laughs> but we beat, em we beat emeralds magic, too. Nah, I mean, you know, he's <laughs> a fight. Yeah. And also, also, well, spoilers. I won't say, but, you know, spoilers. And then things happen, and then we beat him. It's like, you know, bringing a gun to a rock, paper, scissors fight. Right. So now we finally get to deal with Zagat once and for all. He's unique in that he, ha he has his own iframes that he can set up whenever he wants. Like, whenever he's glowing like that, uh, that means he's invulnerable. So we have to attack him in between those glowing moments. And he has three attacks he can do. There's only two he does when he's in normal health, and when he's in red health, he mainly does his meteor attack that does a lot of damage. I think a meteor hit is 8 HP damage, which... That sounds is about that, right. I think all that we have, 8 or 9, something like that, is big. Yeah. Alright, well, Zagot's not dead yet. He has a phase 2. And this is the unique fight in that Fu is our is gonna be our main damage dealer. Um, she does the weak she does she does like the weakest damage in this fight, but with the way her attack works, it stacks. Uh, she shoots five arrows out, and if he, for every arrow that hits, it does extra damage to Zagat. So you can kill him in as little as five hits with uh, uh, Fu if you land all her arrow attacks. Whoops, I was too slow. Also, this game is fun now. Yeah, we're a shmup now. We're no longer an action RPG, we're a shmup. Ah, stay away from him. He also hurts a lot in the US version. The Japanese version, he's a push pushover. So, like every other human-type boss, uh, he's got iframe in between his attacks. He loves doing bees. Yep, that's his favorite attack to do. And that sword swipe attack... Its range is it, it's it's deceptive. It's a little bit larger than you're expecting. Um, also, you do have one magic spell. Like you can cast each one's an attack spell. There's no healing when you're in your robot form. Yeah. Um, for context, uh, your magic, magic spell. Your magic is your is your biggest single point of damage, which still takes 16 hits to kill if you were to only use magic. And we can kill or kill him as little as five hits with foo. If you land all your arrows like that. Other than oh, that, that was good. Uh, didn't die. <laughs> yeah, Hikaru has the most damage. She gets a damage boost because she's the main character in this fight. And then actually, Umi's the weakest at this point, just because of yeah. Fu's bonus with her arrows. Yeah. All right, that fight went well. All right, so now that Zagat's dead, Clef is free from that, that petrify magic that, uh, that was put on him because it was Zagat's power that petrified him. 
and only Zagot could release the spell. <laughs> so that can happen. Uh, if you mash too fast, uh, sometimes you can attack or cast the spell on a cutscene. So we finally have freed Princess Emerald, but it turns out she was actually in love with Zagot and was imprisoned for her own safe or for the safety of Sephiro. Because uh, her magic is so powerful that if her emotions become unstable, the world becomes unstable. And that's what basically happened. She's also really short. And Zagot's, like, really tall. So now she's like, you have to kill me or I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill the whole world. That's basically what it's come down to. Yeah, so here's the point where, you know, Emerald's magic beats our magic in the triangle. And then we're gonna pull out our, our giant laser beam to, uh... We're going to become Voltron. So yeah, uh, we go into this cutscene. Uh, we can't do anything here. We just get d demolished. It's the only time we're dying doesn't do anything. <laughs> and what was it if you cast... If, if you, you cast if you, magic you... in that cutscene? Is that, is that the one where if you cast magic in there, um, then you softlock? Yeah, basically there's like one frame where you can cast a spell and it causes the game to softlock because you're invincible while casting and that's when that's that's when the the damage that kills you goes off. And so with the power of Makona, we fuse the three giant robots together to form Voltron. I don't know if it has an actual name. So, uh you can actually destroy uh the different body parts to weaken her attacks, but the only part that actually we need to kill is the head, so we just stay really close to her and just pound on the head and then move when we have to to not take damage. Yeah, originally we thought that you had to defeat every part of her to win yeah. the fight, but then experiments were done and I think was it, like, you beat her without defeating a part, it's like, oh, okay. Alright, time. Totally forgot to call that. And now we have killed the princess. Excellent and we get anime that you can actually watch. Nights. But Clef, have we really done the right thing? I mean... Don't despair. For you see, the outcome is exactly as Emerald had planned. And at last, your destiny is fulfilled. And now Princess Emerald's a ghost. Princess. fulfilled all that was asked of you remember this no matter where you go the strength of your mind and spirit is the most powerful magic of all but emerald what? that was like a 2 15 57 or so by the way that bad considering i got caught and struggled with the uh the lack of tech falls skip twice it, that's pretty good Yeah, so we keep the little piece of the Escudo, but we're back in back in Earth at Tokyo Tower, and it's like nothing happened. And for whatever reason, in Season 2, they get sent back to Sephiro for whatever. I haven't seen the anime. <laughs> uh, because, because Sephiro is possibly getting invaded by other countries, and also they need to find a new pillar to, you know, keep Sephiro alive. And then... Yeah. Bo more boys come in and things happen and the plot is extremely different in season two of the anime versus the second half of the manga there's extra characters in the anime and there's different relationships and Alcyon's still alive in the anime she is not in the manga and uh i don't like season two that much it's it's i don't i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> i tried i don't like it but uh yeah we're gonna go see some bonus stuff now since we have a little bit of extra time uh, yeah, see I'm what just gonna all those show rainbow what gems got us. Yeah, I'm just gonna show what it gets you. Um, I can't actually show what you get uh, with the unlock saga that have to beat the game again. And I, could, I thought I thought about I should have thought about getting it beforehand, but oh well. So I made a save uh, right before the end of the game, where we had all all the rainbow amulets. And now we're gonna go to the rainbow junction shop again. Just gotta do all this beautiful, beautiful CD loading. 
And I believe the Saturn was a double speed CD-ROM drive, so you know it was it wasn't it wasn't no slouch like the Sega CD and the Turbo Graphics CD. It actually had a little speed to it. So let's go here. Um, I guess I'll go around because I can't get there since I don't have it connected. Because technically you can get to the Rainbow Junction shop from Polyzoo Village, but I never went that way, so it's not connected. Rainbow Junction shop. Here we go. And I like how peppy and happy this music is. So if we were to go over here, there's a blank spot here. Nothing here. If we click it, uh, this is my favorite item of them all. It's called the Final Wish. If you collect eight amulets of each color, it comes true. Did you collect all the amulets? Yeah, we got them. Wow! You've collected every last one of the amulets. Now the final wish comes true. I bet you didn't know this, but I'm not originally from Sephiroth. I'm from another world entirely. How come you don't seem very surprised? I thought that would impress the heck out of you. I had heard that Sephiroth was a great vacation spot with lush nature and a lovely climate. The way everyone went on about it, I figured it was the perfect vacation spot. What were they smoking? The weather here is unstable and the place is torn up. Just as I arrived in Sephiroth, a wild storm broke the item that allows me to travel between worlds. It was smashed and the pieces were scattered to the four winds, and those pieces are called Rainbow Amulets. Now I can finally return to my world. Thank you. The final wish was my own. And now he has a rainbow. Happy Pride Month, everybody. How can I possibly repay you for all you've done? I know. After you complete your task in Sephiro and then return to your own world, you'll find something nice awaiting you upon your return. Don't get too excited. It's just a small thing. Did me a great service finding all the amulets. I really appreciate it. So long, ladies. And he just kind of floats off. And now his uh, brother takes over the shop. This is 100% of Working's Designs Translation. Uh, so now we get uh, this item here, the final, w uh, the Rainbow Ones menu. If we beat the game with this item, it unlocks a sound test and also unlocks outtakes. With the outtakes are fantastic, but sadly I can't show those off. Um, as they would, you know, take a while to get to get again. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and make a save here, and that's it for me. Um, look, look forward to the rest of the marathon. There's some amazing games coming up. I have several friends running in this marathon and myself. And thank you so much for having me, High Spirits, and uh, the staff who did the game selection. I am very happy to to do to participate in this marathon. Thank you, Karaoke, for helping me with commentary. You did wonderful. Yeah, I, I love this game. I love running working designs games and, you know, maybe I'll run this, 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 um, category sometime or maybe I'll do most of the stuff sometime. We'll see. But, uh, thanks for having this game and questing for glory again. And, uh, yeah, great marathon for the rest of the, the week. Lots of RPGs. Please watch. Yes. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening, morning, or afternoon. Thank mm -hmm. you.